Hey again, Warhawks, this is Colonel Wilson. Uh, episode 18 of Freeform Friday, Chief, here we are. Here we are, sir. Hard to believe, 18 weeks now. I think it's been 19 they're, weeks. They're going by quick. Weeks. Yeah. They're going by quick. So, uh, so it's good to see everybody out there. It's been a crazy busy week this week. We've had a lot of distinguished visitors uh, here in the 37th Training Wing Pan, uh, Panis visit uh, yesterday. Kind of capped it all off. We had the Secretary of the Air Force, Barbara Rarick, 25th Secretary of the Air Force, who provided remarks at our graduation ceremony uh, along with the 320 training squadron as we graduated another 440 some uh, trainees to become airmen it was great to see the secretary um, but we also had the chief of space operations and the senior enlisted advisor of the space force we had general raymond and chief toberman both both also at the ceremony and they spent the day with us or the better part of the morning with us as we had the first seven uh, first seven space force enlisted non-prior service come into the Air Force, come into the Department of the Air Force, and now the Space Force, of course. Chief, any thoughts on the, the day yesterday, busy day? It, yes, sir, yeah, it was, uh, it's pretty It's pretty cool when you have a front row of history, sir. I mean, I mean to be there, yeah. first time ever that you have enlisted space professionals, and I think, you know, someday in, in the near future that we'll probably be saying something other than space professionals, um, but uh, really, really neat to, to see those first seven. They're probably the most Famous people, people in the Space Force right now, other than the people we just mentioned. Yeah. Um, but uh, they're, they're just, you know, what I thought is, at the end of the day, <clears throat> their desire to serve from the airmen that are right next to them, it's the same, right? They just want to be on a team. Um, they want to serve. They want to learn new things. They want to see the world. Uh, they want to challenge themselves. So it's great talking with them. Great being there for that moment. And uh, and roll Gator roll. So uh, yeah, roll Gator, roll. Gator Nation. I I, I thought the even just learning about the the um, the, the culture a little bit more and seeing that front row and, and how they, 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 they showed that off to the, to the Space Force team, I thought was, uh, yeah. the team did a great job. So we took, uh, we took uh, General Raymond around, we gave him a tour, uh, he got to see our Kingston Reception Center and then he went over to the 320th. Uh, Sergeant Hasty Milton That's right. provided an awesome tour, he gave him the whole history, uh, the heraldry, the, the uh, tradition. Uh, of the 320 training squadron talking about the rock where it used to 320 used to be out on its own they used to call it the rock because it was like alcatraz and can't stop great, the rock can't stop the rock right so it was great mm -hmm. you know i was i was really impressed with the seven graduates so think about that you're talking about young men and women there were seven of them in total and they are part of history and so they have been doing things since graduation before before they enlisted uh well as they enlisted They've had media attention the entire time. Can you be, imagine being an 18 to 22 year old uh, out there and you've got, you've got cameras in your face, you've got everybody wanting to ask you questions. And they never really, I never got the feeling that the, they, the moment was bigger than they were. Not at all. They, they just seemed to kind of walk through it. And I can't imagine that, you know, 50 years from now, they won't have their kids or their grandkids and they won't go to the video and show it and be very proud of that. You know, we're proud of them. Um, yeah. But we're proud of all 440 some graduates from yesterday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we don't want to lose sight of that. that uh, that's what we're here for is to build the foundation, to set the foundation. And so we did that. So special thanks also to our three Space Force MTIs. They also got a lot of uh, extra attention, I would say, from the media uh, and from, from powers that be. And they handled it incredibly well. Uh, we had Sergeant Mistro, Tech Sergeant Mistro. We had Mass Sergeant Huntley and Mass Sergeant Palmer, all three true professionals over there um, some of them even, even kind of relocating from from their original squadron over to to the 320th to be able to support the training of the the space force mti so agility we value agility we value flexibility and bmt showed it yesterday and so we appreciate that very much uh, so that was great we also had the opportunity to have the top cop general uh, brigadier general roy collins you may have remembered it because he was uh, in the 37th training wing yeah, commander there's, job. I'm sure there's still people in, the, in, in Warhawk Nation that, yeah. that remember him. I have no doubt. So he was here, he wanted to talk uh, a little bit about, not a little bit, quite a bit about our missions over in the 340, 341st training squadron, uh, the, where we are the executive agents for all military working dog programs. That program uh, is uh, high intensity, a lot of visibility. Uh, we value our handlers, we value our caretakers, we value uh, our four-legged airmen that are over there doing that mission uh, and he came in to talk about that and then later in the week he met up with our IAFA uh, with our IAFA training school to look at their tech training program for their defenders which of course is all, all taught in Spanish 
which is a pretty amazing program. And so they go through advanced and supplemental courses and tech training there, uh, equivalent to what they'd get over here on our schoolhouse, which leads us to the 343rd Training Squadron, which is what provides all AFSC awarding courses for our defenders, as well as all advanced and supplemental courses, including our heavy weapons out of Fort Leonard Wood. Um, so he came in, we talked a lot about a ton of different programs. It was great to see General Collins. He was smiling like always, ear to ear. It's great to have him, talk a lot of great things. Um, any thoughts? Chief Lewis, his uh, senior enlisted advisor from the Pentagon, was also there with him. Yes, sir. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, it was a, it was a, great, a great, great visit. I thought, um, you know, we've a large portion of our team, and even, that, you know, you think about our, our special duty missions, you know, that there's many defenders who field those missions, whether it's MTIs or MTLs. Uh, but it was great to sit down with them and talk about, you know, the, where do they think the career field's going? Where do they, where do they see um, you know, how we do you know, modular training? We've talked about that, sir. Uh, potentially doing things a little bit different, um, and how we prepare them and, um, for what's to come. And I really thought it was just great. Anytime we can, we talk about partnerships across our units in, in the in the wing, sir. So we're not necessarily just stovepipe. I thought it was a good chance for them to to hear from him, probably get a common reset and message. And 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 we also kind of talk a little bit about the telephone game. So for our airmen to be able to talk to him directly as the top cop um, and hear from him, I, I thought was a, a really, really important thing, especially as we're, we're, continue, we're about to push off and, and really get more aggressive with adapting and, and how we do things to deliver the absolute best security forces members possible. That's right, that's right. And you talk about the telephone game. Uh, we talk about communication. We talk about directly communicating with all of you out there, which is why we do these. Um, but we had commander's calls all week. Uh, we broke it out into different Rank demographics, grade different graphic, demographics, civilian, uh, military. We did that for the first time. Uh, we started a couple weeks ago and we had three this week, uh, starting out with our company grade officers that we had, I think, on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, we had our uh, junior civilians, our non supervisory civilians. Uh, and then on Wednesday, we had our senior NCOs and we got great feedback uh, all throughout that. We had a ton of QA and really just had some really good discussions, but we talked a lot about uh, a number of things. So. Um, there were some themes. We'll talk about some of the, we'll take some of those most commonly asked questions from those uh, venues. But again, it's just like the chief said, it's all about communicating directly with you and hearing back from you. Because no matter how good, you know, that communication is with our chain of command, there's still multiple echelons and multiple layers. And so when information gets filtered, sometimes it doesn't turn out uh, exactly what was conveyed is, is received. And then sometimes it just gets passed because there's just so much going on. There's so much information. There's so much data out there that I believe strongly that the best way to communicate with each and every one of you is directly just like this. So those commander's calls, uh, I really have enjoyed them. Uh, we've spent a lot of time. I think we've, I think we've spent probably six hours probably yeah, total I think this week. By just the time we're done, I think it'll be 10, at least 10 hours for all the sessions. Yeah, that's great. That's Do you great. have any, any, any big takeaways uh, from that? I think you talked a lot about force development. I think mm -hmm. force development, whether it was civilian force development, enlisted force development, officer force development, I think we've hit it from every single angle that we possibly could. Um, and so we always we always encourage questions along those lines. Uh, we got a lot of, uh, so I don't want to steal thunder, so I know we've got some yeah. questions teed up here that'll talk to some of the most commonly asked questions. Um, we talked about community events, we talked about traffic, we talked a whole bunch of stuff. So um, I, it was just I, I like this. I like the, the way we're doing it too, sir, and I hope people um, you know, there's a little bit of learning curve. We talked about Slido, but I like that tool a lot. I, I like it the fact that because sometimes uh, the boss and I were in a room and maybe there's a couple hundred people in the crowd. Like we're trying, we you know we can't guess what's on your mind. We really you don't want us to assume. Um, and then and then sometimes we get questions here or there, and and you think or you're you're tend to believe does that person represent the whole? And you just don't know. You don't know. Um, so I like the tool. We were asking these questions and and, and at large, and we'll send out the results of. Uh, um, of kind of those simple questions we were asking, you know, three to four in the beginning. But I, I think it, it allowed others to appreciate, hey, how are other people feeling about right. this topic? How are other people part. feeling about this, I, I, um, you know, conversation? How, how well are my leadership taking care of me, aware of supporting me, my development? Um, I, I like that tool. I think we will use, we'll probably use that even more yeah. creatively, sir. Yeah. Um, just for the, you know, the teams out there, too, if you, if you want to use that tool, your own work center. Um, you can actually contact our CAG and they can help you out that too. And then the ability to ask questions anonymously live and take questions live, uh, um, I, I think is a great tool. So that's it. I mean, people get surveyed out, right? We send out surveys. We get surveys all day long. I know I get surveyed out. Um, so, but it's it's really critical that when we take these surveys, they're going to be used for something. Like if they're going to be used for something, then we need to get a cross section of everybody so we get a real 
real idea. So it's not those that are just super happy. It's not just those that are super unhappy. Sometimes it's those that are just sort of agnostic. And sometimes it's those that are like, yeah, I think it's okay. Right. Um, we need to get a cross section to everybody. So we understand that surveys take time and energy. So this was just one quick way where we kind of, and again, it's just like Chief said, you could see you could see the results right there, real time feedback. So if you felt strongly about something, you could see how many other people felt strongly about that thing or how many didn't equally. So um, along those lines, since everybody surveyed out, I wanna foot stomp a survey that's out right now. How about that? The We are coming up on our unit effectiveness inspection. Uh, the Headquarters Area Education and Training Command Inspector General is coming to visit us, uh, I think it's the 13th of January, it's mid-January. And before they come, they always send out a, a survey to try and get a feel for since, worse. Since the organization, since we the like organization, we say, yes. right? And so, as of last week, we'd only had about a 7% response on our surveys. So, 7%, I know, and, and no matter how passionate they are about the things that they're taking the survey on and what they want to get after, 7% is not a true reflection of our wing. 7% doesn't adequately convey to the Inspector General um, who we are and what we do. So that 7%, I'm really appreciative that the 7% took the time, but boy, did those other 93%, if you all could take the opportunity to get on there, take that survey, please. I think it only takes about 10, 15 minutes, um, but it's critically important because we want to give the, I, the IG a good feel for how we're doing, really how we're doing, not just based on a few uh, a few inputs. So uh, please take that if, if at all you get the opportunity. We'd really appreciate it. So we got a couple events we're, we're headed off to today, Chief. Not only are we going to go do some recognition, we do Fun Fridays, we're going to go do Fun Friday. But we're going, I think at 9 a.m., we're going over to the uh, uh, air crew and enlisted, uh, the Enlisted Air Crew Center of Excellence, yes, our 344th training squadron. We're going to uh, be a part of the virtual reality lab ribbon cutting, virtual reality lab. So our uh, enlisted air crews, we have a VR program, a simulator essentially, where they go through and it simulates them being on an aircraft and the things and the actions that they would do. It's a great educational tool for them uh, before they go off to their uh, flying training units. Um, they get some preliminary training here on that. It's pretty awesome. I'm excited about it. Yeah. If I could expand yeah, on it real quick, sure. sir. So when I first got here, it was it was called Project Icarus, and the, and the team down there, um, you know, they, they were, it, it was what was it wasn't just about the equipment or the technology. It was really seeing how those NCOs had a problem and they tackled it, right? And they just used those uh, those tools and those options because sometimes I think people mix up innovation as like a new thing, new equipment, but it has to it has to solve a problem. It has to take a leap in where you are. To a, to, a, to a different level, and that's exactly what they did. If you don't know, on the, on the air crew side, the challenge they have is access to flight hours, right? Um, or hey, we don't have an operational runway here uh, on the base or, or in the wing. So they use that now um, as a great tool to be able to get people immersed in the aircraft, immersed in the weapon system that they're gonna operate on, and then that, that lessens the time of training time, because that is a really, really long training pipeline for the air crew side, um, and, and how they do training. So I think phenomenal. Idea and the great thing is it's it's already been uh, um, offboarded to other locations, so they're going to be able to train here similar equipment and go somewhere else. And uh, um, but just phenomenal job by the uh, uh, COE. I think simulator missions is something that that has continued to grow because accessibility to aircraft because our aircraft are operational. Um, it's hard to find time to train on them, and then fuel costs and fuel savings. And this is a great way to do both. Um, so so thanks to uh, to those airmen that are out there, uh, Major Clark, Chief Arroyo. Leadership team out there, we look forward to seeing you this morning. And then this afternoon, we're going out to the 343rd Training Squadron. We're going to recognize our first, I think, master uh, Mil MTLs, yes, military sir. training leaders, uh, CCAF graduates, and our master instructors yes, as well. So uh, that's going to be exciting. We're going out there at 1400 today to be a part of that ceremony. Look forward to that. I think General Collins is actually going to spend some time uh, with our seven levels over there, and of course, in a safe, socially distanced place uh, way. So, um, just a lot of things happening, Chief. Excited to be a part of this wing, as always. Just another day for the, just another day for the That's right. right. It never slows down, does it? It doesn't. So, so we have uh, Miss Brittany Warwick from our public affairs office here, uh, who, as always, is our producer. How's that? Producer for Freeform Friday. Everybody give a shout out to Miss Brittany online. She does an amazing job, always around doing things. So, everything you see online, I guarantee you, Brittany, 99% of the time has her fingerprints on it. Yeah, from the timestamps to the, the video, on the videos to just making sure that we don't come off as just give, us, a, give some hearts and thumbs movie. up let's go <laughs> give us some likes mm -hmm. uh so Brittany, you have uh i think you've got some questions for us this morning yes sir i have a couple of questions the first one's kind of affecting everybody um and we're getting it from each direction they want to know about gate construction and your thoughts on that and updates yeah. 
So just just to kind of set the set the tone here, the five hundred second civil engineer group and the five hundred second uh, security forces squadron. Sometimes I get my five hundred seconds and eight hundred seconds back mixed up. So if I did that, I apologize. Uh, but the five hundred second SFG and the five hundred second CG uh, are both focused on a project out of Valley High Gate to improve traffic flow and I think anti terrorism force protection. So with that, they've narrowed it down to just one lane, uh, I believe. And so we've seen a little bit of back traffic back up there. Um, inbound, we're, our understanding of it is things are going pretty well. Uh, it's the outbound traffic in the afternoon. So we are looking for feedback uh, our, um, so that we can provide them feedback so we can find some relief valves. Uh, for those that are impacted, we recommend you try and shift your uh, change your shift schedules if you're able to. We understand with the training mission, sometimes that's just not possible. Uh, but we have, heard, we have heard that's a problem. So we are requesting continued feedback if you would please tell us, you know, the time of day, whether it's outbound or inbound traffic, and which gate that you're seeing problems, please put that out there in Warhawk Solutions. You can put it here now. You can send me a personal email. Heck, I don't care. As long as we get the feedback, I think that's a that's what we need. And so that way we can go forward to uh, our partners over in the 502nd and provide them with that data. Just so you know, they're monitoring the gates too. We have asked them to do that. They were already doing it, not because we asked, but because it's the right thing to do. So they're monitoring to make sure that traffic can come in and, and, and flow out. But like I said, I, the only the only real traffic issues that I've personally witnessed and I've heard about anecdotally is outbound traffic out the Valley High Gate in the afternoons. But if there's others, um, I've heard it kind of anecdotally, and we've received all through our commander's calls this week that there are con concerns. Please put it on Warhawk Solutions. We just need some specifics to help us pinpoint it so that our mission partners can pinpoint it too. So. All right. Yes, sir. Number two is going to be regarding the holiday party. We all understand that the COVID-19 is a fluid environment. Do you have an update on that? Just just that we've, uh, so that there are restrictions. I'll just go over some of the restrictions that I've got off the top of my head. Chief, jump in here if I miss anything. Official functions are still authorized, of course, but try and continue to meet CDC guidelines in doing it. So graduation ceremonies, those are, you know, for example, those are official functions. Those are part of the training schedule. Those are part of the training curriculum. So we continue to do those, but we do them again in a socially distanced and safe way as best we can. Um, our holiday parties, which is what uh, Ms. Brittany's asked about there, for those that are on base, um, because they are not official functions and, the, and they all exceed 11 people, so that's the other, that's our 11 people or more, uh, that's kind of the criteria. So can you keep it to 10 people or less? You can do a, a un, unofficial function, a social function like that. If it's on base and you exceed that for a social function, then it's uh, it's going to be prohibited, or at least I think it was highly discouraged was the words that General Miller used in her guidance. So so we we are going to comply with that. Uh, we've had holiday parties this week uh, for our wing staff agency that's been canceled. Uh, we had I had a holiday social set up for our leadership teams across the um, across the wing. I've canceled those. There's been other events DLI canceled theirs. So but by and large, uh, that's the case. There are still some. I think that War Squadron Commanders are taking a look at the safety. Um, that would be off-base holiday party, which was always been planned for off-base. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. It's different authorities. I'm not going to get into the middle of, you know, are you canceling off-base holiday parties? I'm going to leave that up to the Squadron Commander uh, as to whether they want to do that or not. Again, it's off-base. Uh, there's certain inherent risk in everything we do. But at the same point, again, to, to be dictating and mandating something off-base is not something that I want to get in the middle of. So, so that's where we stand with the holiday parties. Um, we also, we talk about risk, right? There's public health risk, there's public health concerns. Uh, that's one side of the risk equation, right? And so there's another side of the risk equation and that is mental health, that's isolation, that's connectedness, that's community, and that's family. And so every time we, we adjust one side of the risk equation, it messes with the other side of the risk equation. Chief, yesterday I saw a Gallup poll that said, hey, mental health, uh, pre-COVID and mental health now, um, there are significant differences. And so we just continue to balance that, right? Right now, the public health risk is off base. It's strong. We see that. We acknowledge it. We recognize it. And we adjust accordingly. But if we think that that's not assuming risk, then we're, you know, the, the continued message is that's not right. So we got to work extra hard on the other side of the equation to reach out to families, to make sure everybody's doing good. It's the holidays. We know that mental health traditionally is a major issue at the holidays. And so you add, compile COVID on top of that and uncertainty and anxiety and the economy and everything else. So we are asking our leadership teams, we're asking our supervisors, 
we're asking everybody that's a part of our organization to make sure your wingmen, your subordinates, your supervisors, heck, your supervisors are all being taken care of over the holidays, especially since we can't get together in the way that we want to. So we just acknowledge that other side of that risk equation. And, and sir, I'd, I'd add to that. I'm a firm believer in the you, you fight darkness uh, with light. Um, just as you said, as we've created these these barriers for COVID, uh, we can also create barriers where people feel like they're alone. Um, and that is what we're trying to fight through, right? We're, we're trying to make sure that there's nobody that has any doubt that somebody cares for them, somebody's there for them, and just to have that connection to be part of a team. And we're, we're, be, we're built to be that way as human beings. I even like how, you know, we, we did cancel our own kind of planned events, but then they pivoted to an event where we're doing deck the halls and we're, we're gonna have everybody spaced out and we're gonna decorate the headquarters building and do milk and cookies and we're still gonna be able to do something, but keep, keep people yeah. safe. Keep people safe, keep it small groups uh, is the focus. So. Well, I think what we would encourage is everybody to, to get together in small groups as best you can and safest way that you can so that you have that connection before we go off. And I know a lot of people are getting ready to take some leave. A lot of people are going to take some time off, which is good. It's wonderful. It's probably good uh, to some degree um, because we don't have large groups coming together for official functions and official capacities, I guess is the way I should say it. But at the same time, people are going to go out. Let's just be honest. People are going to go out, right? People are going to go out. They've got holiday shopping to do. Uh, they're going to go out and eat at restaurants. Those things are still going to continue on. We just implore our population to please be as safe as possible so you come back, you're healthy, you're safe. We uh, And we have to acknowledge that right now the risk off base is very high. Um, but people are going to live their lives. Let's just acknowledge that, right? And so just please do it in the safest possible way. Yes, sir. The last question we have is pretty specific to DLI students. They're sending in that six hours of Zoom is too much and that they need tours. The students are here to understand the American culture. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so our commander's call this week. We had great interaction with our DLI uh, civilian workforce and our DLI civilian instructors uh, that we value so much. And man, that was, that was really great. It was um, a lot of conversation and a lot of feedback. So that was a, a question I think that came up during that session as well and in Warhawk Solutions even later. So our, D, our DLI, you're right, it is hard. A virtual training environment I can tell you my children are really struggling with virtual training environment I think everybody struggles with virtual training environment so I think holistically that's the case that everybody is every student that's out there is struggling college students high school students DLI students so um, the DLI field studies program is something that is alive and well that's grown it's uh, it's it's been strong until we've had these recent spikes and off base uh, activities but the field studies program essentially takes our DLI students when they're not in that virtual environment it takes them Goes, goes out and does things in the local community, goes and does things out in the local region to get them out there because that's a big part of the indoctrination into our culture is not only the English language, but it's to understand America, it's to understand the United States, understand our community, how we, what we value, and getting out there and doing different things. So our field studies program is heavily focused on that. Uh, and so while you write, I mean, six hours a day in a virtual training environment is really hard. Um, we have field studies programs there to complement that as well. So, uh, so thanks for the question. Uh, we appreciate it very much, but uh, we appreciate everything our DLI instructors do. Know that while you are not instructing, that we are doing our best to take our DLI ELC students out and do the field studies program with them. Uh, right now is a little bit challenging though, right? Off base, so we continue to balance that risk as well. So I think, unless we've had any questions come in while we've been sitting here, I think that was all I think that's going to be it, the other just helping families figure out when their students are graduating and guiding them to the right direction for that. So, sure, um, sure. Where, where to tune in anything. I, I think it, it, I don't know if we take a look at the, you know, because we have the technical training side that are doing those as well. Um, but I, I think uh, where can they find that information right now on the graduation so, times for this? So BMT graduation real right. quick. Uh, so that's live stream on Facebook Live here on yep. the Wings, uh, right. Wings Facebook page every single week. Uh, we did last week. As far as the graduation, so the graduations that are the, uh, the events we're going to today are on the tech training side of the house. They do live stream those, and oh, I believe- They're usually from the squadron Facebook pages, sir. Mm -hmm. The squadron Facebook pages. Yeah. So what we can do maybe is we can go out and possibly put some links out there, uh, either on our Facebook page or on our web page. Yes, sir. All right, we will do that. We will make sure that those graduation ceremonies go out there. Before we sign off, sir, I think one more thing. Yeah. So uh, we got some new chiefs in our wing. We did. We got four new chiefs. Yeah, we, so, did, we didn't talk about that last week. We did not because oh, we, we handed out the hardware last we week. We did. Oh, yeah. because it wasn't releasable until that's Monday. Right. Oh, that's right. yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, it's, it, is a, it is a rare thing uh, to be able to serve as a chief in our Air Force. If, if most people don't know, it's reserved for 1% uh, of all the listed positions that we have. 
and uh, we have some phenomenal talent, phenomenal leaders within our wing. But we, we uh, four were selected in the 37 training wing, uh, two from the 737 Tris. So the both the superintendent and the first sergeant. So Senior Master Sergeant Wong and uh, Senior Master Sergeant Jack uh, are, are going to be Chief Master Sergeants. And then also, um, if, if you look at on the BMT side, uh, so uh, Senior Master Sergeant Jocelyn, I mean, he has been in actually three different squadrons. He's worked a heck of a job in RQPI. He's been all over the place. You talk about a guy who's had base level, really Air Force level impact in keeping those uh, individuals safe, but uh, also going to be a Chief Defender background, going back to the, to the, to the community, been a First Sergeant for six years. Um, so also a huge win and then in, in our 30 37 training group side in the 37th Tris also is a uh, senior master sergeant uh, Hyder. So Hyder. yeah, congratulations to all of you and your families and just uh, I posted about it this morning But want people to remember, you know that 1% is so you can take care of the 99 uh, That is your job as a chief and I know uh, those leaders. They're gonna do that phenomenally. Yeah, great great Hey one more point. I wanted to make chief. I know we're getting a little long <coughs> There's a lot of information out there on vaccinations right now um, I think Senior Master and Jack, I saw sent out a great pamphlet. I just encourage everybody to educate themselves. You know, that's going to be a topic of discussion coming out here is the vaccine, uh, not only within the Department of Defense and the Air Force, but just in our society as a whole. So I think it behooves everybody to just get educated as much as they can. There's a lot of questions on that. There's a lot of uncertainty. But then again, there's some that are just chomping at the bit to get vaccinated. So just, uh, just there's tons of information out there. What I'd recommend is re uh, reading that that's been released directly from the CDC. The CDC does a really good job of summarizing, the, irregardless of which vaccination from which pharmaceutical company, uh, the different pros and cons and the different variations of it. So uh, I think that'll help. Uh, that'll help kind of ease that transition as we get into that business is starting to vaccinate, which I think is, uh, if you watch the news, is coming up pretty quickly. So uh, I have nothing more to share though on that um, here uh, here on this in this venue, but uh, more to follow. I'm sure. All right. So everybody, hey, thanks for your time. That's episode 18 in the books. Uh, we are blessed and grateful to have you. Please take care of each other. Please look out for each other. We can't get together in the way that we want, so we'll get, to get, get together in the ways that we can. And so with that, we are out. Warhawks train to win. Thanks, everybody, for what you do each and every day.